<clears throat> I first uh, experienced death when I was a child. When I was about three years old, an Indian lady came by the ranch and said, you know, you need a pony for your boy. I happen to have one, I'll give you. And so she gave me a pony. His name was Todd. I had a great time with that pony. I could bring him alongside a raised platform we had, climb up on top of that platform, and then I'd get on his back. And then we'd ride off across the sagebrush, and if he had happened for whatever reason to start trotting, I'd fall off, and uh, he'd stop, and I'd get up, and we'd go back to the pla raised platform again. And pretty soon I got where I didn't fall off. When I was in the first grade, I'd ride him to school. We had a shed there that we made a the community made a barn out of, and other kids rode horses as well. <clears throat> I'm talking about, you know, the 1860s. <laughs> and uh, we'd tie the horses up and uh, feed them a little oats at lunch, and then ride them home. Once in a while, I'd get to let a girl ride behind me, and I'd take her home. One day I rode the bus, and I came home. Mom said, I'm sorry to tell you, Lowell, but Todd died today. So I, I went out to the shed where he was and looked at him, and he was lying flat, stiff. No life. Totally changed. And that was my first experience with death. The first time death is mentioned in the Bible is mentioned by God himself. Isn't that interesting? He said, don't eat of that tree. Because the day you eat thereof, you surely will die. Serpent came along and had a chat with the woman. And he said, Did God say that? You won't die if you eat that tree. And mankind believed alive for the first time. And they've been doing it ever since. Because soon as they ate of that tree, their relationship with God was changed. So we can come up with the first definition of death. Because, you know, death simply means separation. It doesn't mean the end. We use it that way all the time. That really isn't what death means. What death means is separation. And the case in the Genesis there was they were separated from fellowship with God. And they knew he was coming. Always came every day. So they had to get some clothes on. And then they had to hide. God came into the garden and said, where are you? And they said, oh, we're hiding. Their relationship with God was changed. They died in that sense. Now, we also know that we die physically. Because right away there in Genesis, starting with four and going all through five, you read about so-and-so, 
They begat sons and daughters, and they lived so many years, and they died. Next verse, so-and-so begat so many sons and daughters, lived so many years, and they died. Just keep it up. All through the chapter. What kind of a death was this? That was physical death, in which the spirit separates from the body. Those are the two kinds of death that we read about in the scriptures. And the only way you can tell them apart is by context, what it's talking about. Jesus came along and he said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me shall never die. And what he was talking about was spiritual. You believe in me, you'll get hooked up with me, and you'll get hooked up with me forever. Hallelujah. Shall never die. Now, does that mean I'll never die physically? No. We aren't talking about physical death. We're talking about spiritual death. Keep them straight. Because we can die physically. Well, what does that mean? It means that the spirit is separated from the body. And that happens every time somebody physically dies. One of my first experiences with watching a person die, a friend of mine on the oil fields, I went to see him, and he said, Lowell, I have several things to talk to you about, but I know that you have more important things to talk to me, so start in. So I made sure of where he was with God and helped him find Jesus, and know he was there, he'd been there before, but let that go for several years. And as he was praying, I was standing by his bedside, he just went away. He physically died. Did he spiritually die? No. He just went away. Took a trip. Into the arms of his Savior. So we need to keep in mind, when we say the word death, we need to make sure we know what we're talking about. Make sure we know what we're talking about. Now, I believe that since our first little couple in Genesis partook of the apple, their spiritual death became the way we are. I believe that everybody born from then on was spiritually dead. And that's why it says in Ephesians 2, you who were dead in trespasses and sins, God has quickened. He's done it by his grace. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of the works which any man should boast. But he starts out that phrase, by uh, that uh, passage by saying, you were dead in your trespasses and sins. Now, if that's true, and I believe it is, then people that do not have a living relationship with Jesus are dead spiritually. They don't have a relationship with Jesus or God. They're motivated by their flesh, their own ideas, And they're motivated by the devil. They are of their father, the devil. That's what Jesus said. And that's why when Nicodemus came to Jesus in John 3, 
Jesus looked at him and said, you need, you need to be born again, Nicodemus. Nicodemus said, what? I need to enter my mother's womb again and be born? He said, of course not. I'm not talking about physical birth. I'm talking about spiritual birth. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever liveth and believeth in him should not die or perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Amen? Amen. Or brought to life with God. Opposite of death. Opposite of death. That's why Jesus came along when Lazarus died and said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Never die. So Jesus was born. Lived among men. He came for a specific purpose. And that was to die. For he became sin for me. He who knew no sin. That I might be made the righteousness of God in him. Those are heavy. That's a heavy scripture. But the first thing it talks about is that Jesus became sin for me. Jesus as that sinner died. For the wages of sin is death. And I find out, you know why he died? He died for me. (laughs) Hallelujah. Hallelujah! Jesus died for me. So that I wouldn't have to die. What kind of a death? Spiritual death. I can be made alive in Christ forever. And I am. And so are you. If you've placed your faith in the person and the work of Jesus Christ. That's the book, amen? That's the book. You appreciate that? You better because (laughs) the picture on the other side, for those who do not believe, those who do not believe, Never become spiritually alive to God. Oh, they're spiritually alive. When a person who has no faith in God dies physically, they're already dead spiritually. And they go. They don't cease to exist. They go where God has prepared a place for him if they don't want him. And we'll show you pretty soon what that looks like. We have a little video to show you. Now, we would prefer to think that that is not the case. (laughs) That's really not true, though. God wouldn't send anybody to hell. Hey, you're right. God doesn't send anybody to hell. They choose to go to hell. Well, what about those who never heard? Well, let's not get too wrapped up in the story. If they haven't heard, whose fault is that? It's my fault. It's your fault. If you haven't gone to those who do not know him, You need to send somebody. That's the only possible reason for your existence. Anything else is just a bunch of froth. You need it to live by, but that won't amount to anything. 
I believe. How seriously do we take the idea that people are spiritually dead? The general American public, I think, I don't know everybody. <laughs> but I hear it a lot. When so-and-so dies, oh, they go to heaven. When so-and-so dies, oh, they'll be up there with mom and dad. When so-and-so dies, oh, they'll be up there. I had a woman come to me one time after I had the funeral for her husband. Uh, yeah. She came over to me at the dinner we have afterwards, you know, when we bury people, you always go have a dinner with fried chicken, you know, we do that. She came over to me and she said, Lo, was he saved? I said, I don't know. I don't know that. I do know that he was under the hearing of the gospel several times, so he certainly had opportunity to be saved. So if he wasn't saved, it's not my fault. Well, I don't know how she came out of that, but she was mad at me for years. In fact, she was so mad at me that when her daughter died, and we went over to her funeral in Shelton, Washington, she faked sick and went to the hospital so she wouldn't have to see me. Well, bless her heart, she wasn't going to get out of it that easy. I went to the hospital. <laughs> and I believe we had an understanding. I sure hope so. She was a precious lady. But she wanted her husband with her in heaven. Of course. Of course. But was he there? I don't know. You know why I don't know? Because all I can tell is what you tell me. And you can have all kinds of reasons for telling me what you do. I'm sorry. We are such a complicated rigging. Psychologically. Oh, spiritually. I mean, let's not even get there yet. Physically, goes beyond belief. Psychologically, the way, way our minds work, goes beyond belief. Spiritually, you know, you all come to church. I don't know why you come to church. I would like to know why. I can think I know why. I can assume I know why. Because you love Jesus and you love to talk about him. You like to worship him. But it might also be for the fact that you just uh, enjoy going places. You enjoy going with people. You have friends here. Might be because you like to make a good impression. You think this is a good impression. I don't know why you come to church. But you know somebody that does know why you're here? That doesn't know why you come to church? God does. God knows whether you're saved or not. <laughs> he knows whether your name's written in the book. And let me assure you that if you have placed your faith in him, not me or anybody else, in him, if you've placed your faith in him, your life's written, your name's written down. And you are spiritually alive. When you physically die, your spirit is taken into the presence of God. Paul said, I don't know whether to stay here or to depart and be with Christ. Probably more needful that I stay here because I probably have quite a lot yet to do for God. But I don't know what he's going to do. He might just take me right now. And if he does, I hope that I'll not be ashamed that I'll be working for him and I'll be in the right spiritual attitude and I want to be ready for him when he calls my name.
So I can just jump up there and shout hallelujah. What about my body? Aha. Uh-huh. This is another area where we have a little difference today. What happens to these bodies? Well, you know, I believe the Bible teaches very soundly that there is such a thing as resurrection. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. How you say he was the first to resurrect? And therefore he showed everybody in the world from then on that their resurrection was the truth. That's what happens to your cute little body. I don't care what you do with it. In 1 Corinthians 15, it tells us it's just like a seed that you plant in the spring. We're about ready to plant garden now. Carl tells me that you've already planted garden, Evelyn. Our bodies are like a seed. They're planted in the ground. And they sprout. Or, the Bible says, in other words, the physical is changed to spiritual. The physical dies, the spiritual lives. You ever see a corn kernel after you plant it and it grows into a plant? You would never dream by looking at a corn kernel that that's what the plant's going to look like. And right there in Corinthians, it tells us that, you know what? You can't tell what you're going to look like. That's up to the Father. But you know what that tells me? I'm pretty special. You know why I'm special? Because God made me. He made me in my mommy's womb. Just like he wanted me to be. He gave me my brain and he gave me my personality. He gave me everything. Well, it's been changed a little since. But I mean, I came out of my mommy pretty much the way I am. And I was built for a reason. Built for a purpose. Praise God I found it. He showed it to me. (laughs) Okay? But I have no idea what I'll look like in eternity. I know that my body, which is very precious to God, is His. I need to be careful what I do with it while I'm living and when I die. Because he's going to take that body as seed and make a spiritual, eternal body out of it. And he does this for everybody, believer or unbeliever. Resurrection applies to everybody. Everybody's physical body is going to be turned into something spiritual. Now, the unbeliever will live spiritually forever, apart from the presence of God in hell. And the believer will be changed into a spiritual body and live forever in the presence of God the Father. And that, my friend, is the meaning of death. Let's pray. Thank you, Father, for the privilege of knowing this truth and being able to live in the light of it. Thank you, Father, for Jesus coming and dying for me, for you, everybody here. Everybody in the whole world, not willing that any should perish. Thank you, Father. And thank you, Father, for the privilege of sharing this truth. Thank you, thank you, thank you. 
And we ask this in Jesus' name, amen. Amen.